Workshop topics, making a brass cover for my Smart and Brown control panel. In the previous episode, I showed how I marked out the positions for the buttons, and in this one, I'm cutting them out. I'm, of course, making a card template, and I will transfer the hole positions onto the piece of brass, but not before I've cleaned them up and made them the right size using a flapper wheel in my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool. Since I fitted this bench mounting for the Proxon tools, I don't know how I did without it. I use this for a lot of the jobs that I do. I have it permanently mounted on the bench in the corner near to where I sit. Over now to the Smart and Brown lathe to have a look at the job. I'm making an escutcheon plate or a brass cover plate to cover all this lot. To start with, I removed the reversing switch lever. I don't need to remove the two speed clutch lever. Thankfully, I don't have to remove the lever on the right hand side. It's quite a complex arrangement. It's the two speed lever for the clutch. In this clip, I'm checking that the cardboard template that I've made fits over the on and off switches. I made a bit of a cutting error when I cut the corners, but I will compensate for this when I use the template to mark the brass plate. As you can see, I didn't cut the brass plate to the same shape as the cardboard. This is a bit of mad marking out, but I don't want to drill the holes in the wrong place. When I hold the plate, before I drill it next to the control panel, you can see what I'm doing. And now it's over to the drilling machine. I've fitted one of these type of cutters into the chuck. Some engineer type viewers may be thinking, why didn't I mark all the hole centre positions on the brass plate? Well, you don't really need to with these hole cutters because you can see where it's going and if it starts to be in the wrong place, if you apply some side pressure onto the hole cutter, it starts to cut in a different direction. It's now time for a serious health and safety warning. I'm holding this brass plate in my hands. Yes, I've removed all the sharp edges, that's common sense. I feel the need to mention that I always keep the belts quite slack on my drilling machine. The belts are tight enough to do the work that I need to do with the drilling machine, but if the drill grabs, or this tool particularly, and it will grab, then the belt slips. Once upon a time, when I first left school, I got a job as an electronics engineer. I was an apprentice, and you had to serve your time in the machine shop, and I hated it with a passion. I was given the job of drilling thousands of holes in pieces of metal. And in the workshop, there were two drilling machines. One was a big, powerful, gear-driven thing, and the other one was pretty much like this one. When I was younger, I grew my hair quite long. And one day, just like the previous day, I was drilling a lot of holes in instrument cases. I'll just break off here to say that you've just seen me moving the work about. This is to reposition the work under the cutter to make sure it cuts in the centre of the marked hole. And once again, now it's on track. You can hear the different sound it's been making. It's a good idea with these type of cutters periodically to turn them over and drill from the other side. That way you get rid of the countersink effect and the cutter cuts much more freely. Once again, I'm putting quite a lot of side pressure on here to move the position of the hole because it's not exactly in the center. Back to the story. So I'm sat drilling holes as a very bored 16 year old with very long hair which suddenly got entangled in the chuck. It pulled my head very quickly towards the chuck and I headbutted the chuck. But thankfully it was the smaller of the two drilling machines and the belt slipped and I turned the machine off very quickly. If I'd been on the more powerful drilling machine it would have been a different story. I would have ended up with a bald patch or possibly a hole in my head. In the previous clip the hole cutter became loose in the chuck so I tightened it up again. I use this piece of mahogany which supports the cutting tool as it goes through the brass. For the reversing switch it's just a simple hole. I simply drill through from one side and then turn the work over to deburr it. Now comes the difficult part. I do not have a hole cutter the size that I need to make the hole in the brass plate where it fits over the two speed clutch lever. I tried this larger cone cutter but this was no good at all. It's very old, quite blunt, and it's still not the right size anyway. I have a few hole saws, but I just did not have one that was the right size for the job. What makes it more difficult is that this machine is quite old, made in the UK, long before things like this changed over to metric. I decided to just give this up as a bad job as it was going nowhere. 
Time for plan B. Use a 1 8 drill and go all the way around, drilling small holes, join up the holes, drop out the centre and then clean up the mess. I'll speed up this clip because drilling all these 1 8 of an inch diameter holes took a while. I didn't bother centre punching the holes or anything like that. I've got quite a good eye and it's well practised, so I just got on with it. I've shown this sort of thing before when I made the wrapper sheet for the simplex boiler. That was a very thin piece of brass. This one is 1.5 millimetres. Good and bad ways to join up the holes so that I can remove the inner part. On the simplex boiler wrapper I just used the side of a drill in the drilling machine. For this job as it says on screen I'm using a rotary cutter, but I'm getting nowhere fast. I don't know where this cutter came from, it's fairly sharp but not sharp enough to get through this brass in a reasonable time. It's just starting to get hot and so is the brass. So I'll try an alternative method. This is a very small and convenient Proxon jigsaw. I bought it to cut out the spectacle plate on the simplex. It's no good for this job and the blade soon broke. Then I had a brainwave and I cannot recommend this in any shape, way or form. This is a very small milling cutter for my very small Proxon milling machine. It would be okay in the milling machine but it's not too good sticking up from the Proxon rotary tool mounted in the tool holder on the bench with me trying to control where the piece of brass goes when the milling cutter comes into contact with it. Milling cutters are fine in milling machines but they're not too good if you use them in drilling machines or in an electric drill. Just don't do this. I did and once I started I had to finish. It did actually cut through the holes but the overall effect on the diameter of the main hole was not good. But I persevered and ended up with a really raggy hole. I removed the milling cutter from the Proxon motor tool on the bench and fitted an 80 grit flapper wheel. To make the inside of the hole smooth took a long long time. I went round and round and round for what seemed like an age. I suppose I could have used a fly cutter and bolted this to the milling machine table and that would have got a perfect hole the first time. And if it was part of a model I may well have done that. Although setting up the work on the milling machine would have taken a disproportionate amount of time. This will be okay when it's finished for the purpose that I intend it to fulfill. Eventually after much flapper wheeling and grinding it looked like this and I think it will be okay for the job. And that is it. No more will I drop things down into the cabinet when I'm working. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.